So as of today, this morning, I saw a video that Jim Sterling had posted in reference to politics in gaming and how just about every game has politics. So I wanted to discuss that a little bit more, maybe even turn this into a kind of a um, response video to that. You know, not, not necessarily him, but rather the topic itself. As you may have seen in one of my previous videos, I did discuss how I dislike journalists or, you know, outright hate them. And I listed off a bunch of reasons and I never listed politics and that's because I to a degree agree with Jim Sterling here like I like Jim Sterling because he's capable of, regardless of how absurd or crazy his arguments are he's he's capable of building quite a strong argument in defense of whatever his argument is and I really admire that to an extent so the reason why I think politics you know it's not something that I hate journalists for is because I myself am someone that kind of when I'm watching some like a movie movie, an action movie for instance, I'll get frustrated when a character just shoots off a thousand rounds with a gun and I'll be like, that guns don't work like that, you know? Or or like in a sci-fi or something, they'll they'll just like fall through gravity gravity or like in Star Wars there'll be an explosion in space or something. And I'll just be like, science doesn't work that way. You know, stuff like that just draws me out of the experience and makes me not downright always hate the movie, but it can build that kind, like build towards it. So generally for journalists when it's like, yeah, they look for that in their review. I'm kind of the same in, in a lot of different aspects like that. So it's, it's just kind of their own personal taste and something that they look for themselves. It is a bit stronger in terms of politics and everyone's kind of fighting this. So I just wanted to discuss this a bit further because, you know, politics is kind of a, a stronger, deep discussion. And I myself am someone that likes to say, you know, we should bridge discussion, especially about video games. We should be open to discussion and all that. So, of course, I want to discuss this. And as he said, you know, every game can have politics. And you can kind of, it's kind of one of those things that you can insert, like, the word Nazi. You can just slap on anything. And that, that doesn't in itself mean anything. But he, he gave examples to some games where it's just like, yeah, people have drawn those parallels. Where it's like Sonic, for instance, being the freedom fighter against an oppressive corporation that greedily buying up different lands and properties and destroying forests to, you know, do forestization. That, for me, was one of the most interesting things about the original theme of the classic um so, you know, it, it was something that they've delved away from further nowadays, which is more fitting since people didn't complain about it before back then. I just kind of like to see those parallels and stuff like The Matrix, which one of the biggest things about The Matrix was is parallel to politics. So I, I myself also do like to see some sort of politics, as long as they aren't just there just for the simple parallels that they actually are intertwined with the story to have more to say that the characters do have some sort of dilemma where they both have something to say to one another in a refutal that that's kind of like a challenge between the war of the minds kind of thing you know like a mental battle between the two where it's it, it feels like it's a debate then more than it is an action movie but you know that there's the other elements in the whatever uh, realm of fiction that's going on that also makes it like interesting further than it is just a bunch of people in a room talking about what bills to pass or whatever the fuck you know like it, it actually has something that's connected to the real world to draw you with, which is generally why I sometimes actually do like to see politics in there. I mean, it is a bit annoying when someone do a review and or like someone else does a review and they go in expecting something and they come out disappointed with that something not being in there, you know, the expectation requirement not having been met, which is another reason why people hate politics or that sort of outlook from reviewers when stuff like Star Wars doesn't have the science required for it. I completely understand that, but I still don't agree with it. I mean, it is one of those things where it's like you get too much of it and you just get sick of it, which is what I feel is happening to the mainstream. But another point that I wanted to bring up though is just because it is there, Jim Sterling says, this that like your political uh your political outlook will affect everything that you do and say and it will affect all your work now that's something that i'm kind of in agreement with as well as a disagreement with and i'm more leaning towards a disagreement because sometimes you just look into the past and historical moments and something like when you're creating a villain for instance just because you create fucking hitler or, or something you know like that doesn't always mean that you agree with this villain's ultimate goals like in metal gear rise revengeance you, you don't exactly agree with senator armstrong i mean there's that thing of like memes being a, 
a big push politics, which is what most people drew. But the original outlook for him specifically was, you know, you use memes to start a war so you can profit off the war by hypnotizing children with memes in VR, meme culture, and encouraging them to, you know, start war so you can just get a ton of money from selling weapons and guns and all that shit. That to me isn't something exactly that you would say, yeah, the, the creator of this work completely agrees with this. It's like, no, not really. I mean, they did draw obvious parallels. They did look to specific events in history and try, like, draw inspiration to create their works from it. And it is something that, like, you know, Jim Sterling said that it's, like, it's insulting that you draw from these things and you disavow and you say that it's, you don't want to discuss it and you're not staining anything. Well, I, I kind of agree that it is a bit insulting if you say don't discuss these things when you draw it from a real world moment especially one of such tragedy but if you are encouraging discussion like like in metal gear they always do <laughs> because like i love metal gear when it takes itself so seriously despite being so stupid and goofy and out there but it does encourage that discussion on those sort of topics as absurd and stupid as they are i mean it feels kind of trivial but it does build towards that kind of ultimate discussion so it doesn't really come off as like insulting to those people that have gone through it so that and ultimately at least like jim sterling didn't make a video like that one guy did shitting on the saying that he hates the new fucking doom game just because it's a triple a game and say, claiming that all triple a games being so trivial and black and white that all triple a games are corporate products to be sold and forgotten about and not actual art and only indie games are art and shitting on in his own crowd by saying which is the crowd of people that say fuck corporations man with the dumb fucking analogy that I've heard all year which compares selling gambling to kids through a product that you had to pay full price for which here in Australia is $100 and saying that in the same video that even though all AAA games which which is regarded to him as being having a hundred plus people work on it with a publisher behind the game as well as the developer that a game like Metal Gear Solid 2 is somehow artistic for the same reasons that Doom 2 isn't gonna be which is that there was a human touch from one person over the hundreds of people forgetting that konami published metal gear on top of the actual developer with hideo kojima being the only one that had that creative input to insert into it which just leaves everything so confusing and trivial that with such double standards that you confuse as to exactly what he's trying to say and with such an analogy is like using public transport to selling gambling to kids but that's a different discussion for a different time i don't want to exactly hop into youtube drama even though I can tear apart that terrible video that's really kind of doesn't explain anything clearly like everything's so mix matched where the points are all counteracting one another and everything's made so trivial despite being you know like where he shits on Jim Sterling for doing the exact same thing he does which is calling out gritty corporation stuff to make games more less of an art form and more of a corporate product to be sold and forgotten about by complaining about those sort of monetization things which is half the problem in the fact that he used such a shitty analogy like there's nothing wrong with AAA games but the problem is when they do that sort of stuff that it makes it into a more corporate product and less of a game AAA products can can be games, they can be art. It's not that a hundred people working on something that somehow prevents it from being it an art. That's just an insult to the whole gaming industry as a whole, the whole subject matter that you're just so stuck in the 80s and 90s that you're just incapable of seeing that and respecting the modern game. I mean, it's not exactly like the developer, the 10 developers that he pointed out for um, Doom were any good, especially you, Carmack, you little cunt. But yeah, as always, if you have a different opinion, leave it in the comments below. I do encourage discussion, as I said before. It's not exactly something that I think should drive solely your thoughts and opinions on a game or product or whatever but it is something that does drive it to an extent and i do understand why he like jim sterling would complain when people like them uh the developers of the division two say to to, to just like try to end the conversation on it rather than encourage it which is what they should do. They should encourage discussion, not discourage the discussion. Because, you know, discussing controversies <laughs> like that is how we know right from wrong how, and how we decide right from wrong as a society and how we move along as a people. To quickly recap, as long as there's 
context full of politics that it adds some narrative push it's not just there for metaphors and there's real characters there with real motivations outside of the politics then i'm fine with it and the politics itself i don't think is a reflection of what the creator makes it can sometimes be drawn from real world events to make it feel real and add depth to the world and overall narrative of the story anyway i hope you all enjoy. now there's a pretty meme exquisite if you just uh, you know want to press the the x x s and y y y and x x and y y y again you'll be sucked Skeleton,